Good morning. Of course, thanks for coming to this session. Um, I was telling like, how popular this session has been. I am glued here. But, so uh, I want to thank SAEM for um, uh, uh, having this session every year. And I, I want to thank Chris for taking time to submit uh, this session every year. Uh, it's always fun uh, to have this session. I don't know about the content, but the fight is really interesting. Um, so, so I know you guys are here for mostly for sideshow more than the kind of content. But I'll try to give, well, each of us will try to give you um, uh, uh, some of the, like, especially for AI, what the future looks like and how it would make a difference and whatnot. So with that, uh, so my job here and the reason I was asked to do this session is to present an argument. Uh, which I strongly believe uh, is to, uh, like, AI is going to um, revolutionize POCUS and it's going to redefine how POCUS is going to be used in future and it will have a significant impact in patient care. So with that, who likes, uh, who doesn't like Terminator movie? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think I have the crowd, Chris. All right, so I don't know if I need to talk anymore, but I'll try. All right. So um, you are, I think most of us probably attended the session uh, yesterday about AI. Uh, and I think if you came to AI one meeting, there was another session there. So most of you are familiar with AI. So I'm not going to take a lot of time uh, to talk about what AI is and what deep learning is. But briefly, AI is a new paradigm of uh, uh, clinical intelligence software. Um, it is designed to help uh, accelerate uh, physician skills and uh, augment and AI help in the clinical world. Uh, it redefines how we interface with images and whatnot. Um, and again, it's all about correlation with the big data. Uh, and and th that's where uh, the crux of AI is. Um, and then if you look at, broadly speaking, uh, machine learning methods are divided into supervised and unsupervised learning. And there are a variety of uh, machine learning algorithms. And one of the uh, important uh, concepts is about neural networks. So truly, I don't want to talk about uh, the lingo, I think there was a great session yesterday, and that's not the point of this lecture anyway. So if you, if you look at it right now, there's a lot of focus on the, the studies are being done on how do we integrate uh, AI into, you know, clinical practice. And, and now for us, uh, I mean, for all those focus geeks, so how, do, how does AI kind of blend into, in our world, how does it make a difference in what we do right now? So it is predicted that at least by 2025, there's going to be broad, uh, widespread integration of AI uh, in, in healthcare industry um, for financial reasons and also for improving health, healthcare outcomes and whatnot. Um, so it is inevitable. It is coming to uh, our world. And, and, it, and I think it will make a positive impact, uh, in my opinion. So I strongly believe we're just getting started right now. So there is a lot more to come. Uh, we're just seeing those auto tools and we're getting excited about the auto tools. Uh, but we all know that once we're involved in the point of care world and talking to vendors, people are constantly working on these AI tools, whether it's a handheld or established vendors, uh, whatnot. So it's just the beginning, in my opinion. It's just going to explode. So we have already an AI abstract that was presented yesterday. Uh, uh, Nick, uh, uh, Nick's group presented yesterday. And then as I was kind of uh, talking to my colleague who sent me uh, another study this morning uh, about another AI study looking at predicting for kidney injury. So I strongly believe it's just a matter of time. It's going to explode uh, AI in our world. So the way, one way to look at AI is um, whether it would help you to make um, uh, a qualitative decisions, meaning yes or no, a categorical answer versus quantitative, doing a lot of quantitative measurements. Um, and how does it help an experienced user versus a, a novice sonographer? And also, are there therapeutic implications of ha having uh, AI integrated into uh, POCUS? So here, it's pretty much like you're looking at it, you know, there's cardiac contracts or not, or, you know, what's the... Uh, simple questions, is it pericardial effusion or not? Those are categorical or qualitative uh, uh, information you can get. And there is pneumothorax or not, uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, you can f feed them uh, ultrasound system with algorithms and uh, that possibly could pick up all of these and give you those answers. 
And here it would be more like a quantitative answer. What's the diastolic function here? Uh, what's the E to A ratio? Or what is the VTI here? These are time consuming measurements uh, for all of us, uh, regardless of what the expertise is. And that's where AI can jump in and make your life a lot easier. And going beyond that, I think it's more like now you're trying to, the machine is trying to help you uh, acquire the pictures and also optimize the views to get these measurements. And uh, that's one step beyond, and that's already work in progress. And so, it, so the look, the looking at AI would be like something like it would help you uh, measure things which are maybe time consuming, uh, and that will help you integrate that uh, your, the technology into the workflow and that should be accessible at bedside and give you a quality feedback right away. And that would be uh, uh, the optimal scenario. We are familiar with these algorithms, right? So we know VTI, where 18 means what, less or more, whatever that is. So now, take this into consideration. You have all these tools at your disposition. Uh, so you have POCUS, v, uh, Auto VTI, or IVC, or MAPC, TAPC, um, and then if you look on the other side, you have qualitative uh, cardiac activities, lighting lung sign, and uh, things like that. So the patient presents with a shock. Then let's say now you're trying to determine what type of shock it is, and you have all these auto tools at your disposition. Now, if you, these tools are integrated into, uh, into this algorithm, um, just imagine how um, I think the way we practice could be uh, different compared to what we do right now. So it could be a patient presenting uh, with low blood pressure, and then you have these findings there, um, and then you use sorry, and you use uh, your AI tools, and then you determine that it's volume depleted, and then how AI tools could help you uh, to proceed with the volume, uh, fluid resuscitation. So one step beyond, I strongly believe not only will it help with the image acquisition, and not only will it help you with the interpretation, but it actually probably give you uh, test characteristics. Uh, you know, that will be blended, meaning that this is 90% sensitive or 98% specific, and then actually direct you uh, in, in a therapeutic algorithm maybe. So I, I believe that's coming. It's just a matter of time. Um, uh, and it just look at, and our job would be just looking at the data. Do you guys like Minority Report? Still a great movie, right? <laughs> so I would love to have something like that right in front of patient, grab the data, and then, okay. All right, we're going too far. Uh, but I'm saying it's like, it, I think that's coming. It's in the near future. Um, so I, I think AI, so it goes with image acquisition, interpretation, and it would increase the confidence uh, how, uh, you, how you make a, you know, when you make a diagnosis definitely will have impact on the patient outcomes, and it will make you efficient in a busy shift. I know we have all been asked a thousand more things to do during a shift, and it will definitely improve our efficiency and accelerate the patient care, and it will help you with the workflow. So I know Chris is going to say that every self-driving car is killing like a thousand people a day, uh, and it's not, <laughs> AI is not good, but no, nothing is perfect in this world, right? So. Uh, so far, the data with the AI has been that, you know, it's, it's as good as human eyes, and it may not detect everything, but in some cases, even the humans miss something, AI is picking up that stuff. So it is not a perfect tool. It may need still some human oversight, but definitely a good, uh, good thing to have in your armamentarium. So this is one of the reasons I strongly believe we need AI, because in this room, you know, most of our, our ultrasound savvy or ultrasound interested, right? But broadly speaking, that's not, we don't want to limit the use of ultrasound to a specific group of people. We want everybody in the community to use it, right? So we, the data is like there's a wide gap between use of ultrasound between community and academic world. So a study done by our group, and Chris also participated in the study, when you ask residents, one of the common things they mention is lack of time. And that's one of the reasons there's they can't use ultrasound. And if you look at the community ultrasound data, it's not that great. It's like quarter, 25% uh, or 30% are actually picking up ultrasound pro for some reason, not even for all applications. And this has been replicated in different studies. So, and, and one of the main problems, if you, the, even the residents are very good in our shop when they graduate and go across the street and practice in different hospitals, this is the main thing they mentioned to me is time. So, I think AI addresses these issues, lack of time, or maybe lack of 
confidence and uh, lack of skills because you're not doing that, uh, using that application that often. I think those are the things I believe uh, AI would make a difference um, uh, in poker's world. We have already seen this, right? Industries have adopted this across the board, and we're beneficiaries. And it would be silly to think uh, that this is not coming to our world and it would not make an impact on the patient care. We've already done this. We've been shocking patients for a long time, right? It's not just a diagnostic thing. And we've been using EKGs. Of course, EKGs overread, but still, it's already there in our world. So it is not about, you know, anymore uh, whether AI, um, would come into our world, make a difference or not. It's about, who do you like? Siri or Alexa? Um, so I know Chris has been talking to Siri more than his family, okay? And he likes Alexa so much. He named one of his daughters Alexa, all right? That's the inside information I got yesterday. So don't believe what he says, all right? Um, so I, uh, this is something, you know, it's coming, you know, they, the day is not, we, one of these days where, you know, the drone will take the machine and scan somebody to bring the data back for you. Uh, and again, well, one of my co colleagues is doing a study about uh, delivering medications to remote place using a drone and whatnot, but I think the machine is going to scan and send you the data. So it's coming. So I strongly believe that there will be widespread integration of AI into the POCUS world uh, in the near future and it's going to make our workflow much more efficient, and you'll have a significant impact on diagnosis and uh, efficient patient outcomes. Thank you.